Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon to vote for the character you want to see next, and like and subscribe to be heard more next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Dinah Lance, also known as Black Canary, a girl who can sing you a song, break your neck, or break your neck with a song. In the entertainment business, that's what they call a triple threat. <laughs> Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to crank the volume to 11 with the loudest shouts possible in D&D. If you think that means the second level spell shatter, I'm telling you now, you think too small, far too small. Next, we need to use our voice in less intense ways. Everybody loves a singer and it's nice to be loved. Finally, vocal arts are great, but martial arts are just as fun and it's an activity all your friends and romantic partners are into as well. Working out is more fun with buddies, I get that. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just watch those multi-classing minimums. Charisma will be number one. If your superpower is the voice, you either need big pipes or the ability to turn your chair around and act surprised to see a singer singing. Why do all the voice judges act so surprised to see a singer when they turn around. Like, I get that the gimmick of the show is that they might end up picking singers who aren't conventionally attractive, but every time the chair spins, they're like, what? Someone's singing? Sorry, weird tangent. Dexterity next. If security isn't good at the club, you might make some extra money as a bouncer. That could be cool. Wisdom after that. Somehow you're able to shatter glass and still hear things fine. You must have a natural aptitude for perception. Follow that up with intelligence. You're a pretty smart lady and you run your own investigations pretty regularly. Constitution is a bit low. Unfortunately, not everything can be high and you're in Superman's world with no special toughness powers. Rule of relativity means that you're kind of a glass cannon. We're gonna dump strength though. Again, Superman world. You're not exactly capable of throwing a moon at Brainiac. Dinah is a human, or I guess a metahuman. We'll call that a variant human because I want to. Make her an air coker if you want. It's just not black canary. We'll scoop up the elemental adept feat for thunder damage, letting you ignore resistances and treat your ones as twos on damage die, making all your shouts a little more consistently painful. Bump your wisdom and your charisma with your two free points, take athletics for your skill of choice, and the entertainer background for acrobatics and performance. You could also take the spy background, but seriously, your starting class has the most flexibility for skills in the game. You could make this work with the hermit background. That's because we're starting off as a bard of prey, which is a very funny joke. Please subscribe now. You get three skills from the bard list, which is noted on your character sheet as the section marked skills. Persuasion, investigation, and perception, or survival for better tracking abilities. I tend to lean more towards perception since it has more passive checks but other than that you're a solid investigator and persuasive member of the justice league those skills are just nice the main reason we're here is so we can start things off with thunder damage with cantrips like thunderclap to force a constitution saving throw of eight plus your proficiency bonus and charisma modifier on creatures within five feet of you dealing 1d6 thunder damage to those that fail it can be hard to let people get close to you when you're a superhero True Strike lets you remind your audience that if their political positions put them in opposition to basic human rights that you don't want them to be part of your audience. It also lets you give yourself advantage on a weapon attack next round, but that's bad, just attack twice. Message lets you whisper to someone within 120 feet of you and they can whisper back. Despite all your vocal abilities, sometimes it's nice to just have a good old walkie-talkie. For first level spells, Thunder Wave forces a constitution saving throw on creatures in a 15 foot cube in front of you, dealing 2d8 thunder damage to those that fail and pushing them back 10 feet. They take half damage and aren't pushed if they succeed, but this is gonna help you clear out the club if you're not feeling like doing an encore or you could just leave you don't know them anything Feather Fall lets you eliminate falling damage for up to five falling creatures as a reaction. Most people can't fall off a building and yell at the ground to make it not hurt them, but you can. That's cool. Long Strider is pretty basic stuff. It increases your movement speed by 10 feet for an hour. You're not going to keep up with Barry, but you can at least keep up with the non-speedster members of the league. Speaking of heroes, Heroism lets you give a creature temporary HP equal to your Charisma modifier at the start of their turns every round for a minute, depending on your concentration, and they're immune to frightening as long as the spell is up for a little bit of inspiration. And speaking of inspiration, Inspiration, you'll have Bardic Inspiration to give your allies a d6 to add to ability checks, attack rolls, or saving throws sometime in the next minute. You have a number of d6s equal to your Charisma modifier per long rest, so this should make you popular on any team, whether that be Birds of Prey or Leagues of Justice. Second level Bards get Jack of All Trades, letting you add half your proficiency bonus to the skills you're not proficient with. Dinah isn't going to throw cars or anything, but if you need a human task done, she's a pretty good person to call. You also get Song of Rest, letting your allies recover an extra d6 on short rest as you sing a cheerful tune betwixt world-ending threats in the Watchtower break room. For this level's spells, Identify tells you what a magical item is, what 
what it does, how many charges it has left. It could be magical intuition or it could be Google. Dinah can Google things. Third level bards get expertise in two skills of their choice, doubling your proficiency bonus for said skills. I'll actually recommend athletics and acrobatics to make up for the low strength score and to fly around the battlefield like some sort of bird. Membership in the Birds of Prey isn't actually based on gender, it's based on dexterity score, because every female in the comic books was designed to have a petite borderline in human proportions, so all of them have to be nimble fighters to justify being satisfying to the male gaze. But oh no, the feminists are taking over because we have to watch a movie with five named females, everyone batting down the hatches. Anyway, you can choose a bardic college. Valor bards can inspire their allies to hit harder or get hit less harder with combat inspiration. This lets your allies use an inspiration die on damage rolls or add it to their AC when they're attacked, which I think might end up being a bit better use of it, but it's not your job to tell the team what to do. Oracle can do that. You can also learn second level spells. Shatter Force is a constitution saving throw on creatures in a 10 foot radius sphere, dealing 3d8 thunder damage to those that fail, half as much to those that succeed. Creatures made of inorganic material and inanimate objects also take the damage and have disadvantage on the saving throw. Meaning if you run into an anonymous robot army, this will be great at clearing them out. Superman will probably be 1v1ing the big bad, which means that you're probably going to be on anonymous robot army duty. It's a good fit. Fourth level bards get another ability score improvement. My first goal is to truly burst the eardrum, so we'll start off by bumping the charisma for harder to resist shouts. Speaking of bursting eardrums, blindness deafness forces a constitution saving throw on creatures, blinding or deafening them if they fail. No concentration required, they just get to reroll the save on their turns. But if you've got a capped off save, something tells me their ears might be ringing for a while. I don't totally know how you would blind people, but get creative, I believe in you. Fifth level bards get a font of inspiration, letting you recover your bardic inspiration die on short rests instead of long rests, and that die bumps up to a d8 here so not only are you inspiring people more often you're straight up more inspiring you can also scoop up third level spells like sending which lets you communicate a 25 word message to someone on the same plane as you and creatures on other planes if you want to with a five percent chance of failing there if you're going to apocalypse the least you could do is text ollie and let him know you're going to be late he worries six level valor bards get an extra attack letting you attack twice instead of once with your action helping you get some combos going with whatever weapon you want probably a dexterity based one will expand your list in a second for this level spell knock breaks the lock off its hinges but it also makes a very loud sound that can be heard up to 300 feet away with a pitch you're screaming at it might be hard for people to notice you're saying open sesame but that is what you're saying seventh level bards get fourth level spells freedom of movement is similar to knock letting you free yourself from non-magical shackles by spending five feet of movement but you also get to ignore difficult terrain become immune to effects that would slow you down like restraining or paralyzation or difficult terrain for an hour pop this before the fight to make sure that you're not getting pinned down eighth level bards get an ability score improvement letting us cap off our charisma modifier for maximum saving throws and maximum inspiration die not to mention stellar charisma checks to make those checks even better scoop up enhance ability from the second level letting you give a creature advantage on a skill check of a certain type if you choose athletics their carrying capacity is doubled if you choose dexterity they don't take falling damage from heights of 20 feet or less and if you choose constitution they get 2d6 temporary hp you can still choose the soft stats there just aren't any extra bonuses whatever you choose it lasts for an hour depending on your concentration Time for a quick jump over to Monk, because monks like to jump. You get martial arts, letting you make your unarmed attacks with your dexterity modifier. They deal 1d4 plus your dexterity modifier in bludgeoning damage, and you can use any simple weapon without the heavy or two-handed property with your dexterity modifier. So now you can hit people with your pipes, or a literal pipe if that's what you want to call a reflavored quarterstaff. You can also make an unarmed attack as a bonus action after you attack with a monk weapon or an unarmed attack as your action for a three hit combo every round. You can't be wearing armor while using martial arts, so it's a good thing you look cool in fishnets and a yellow jacket. Unarmored defense makes your AC 10 plus your dexterity and wisdom modifier when you're not wearing armor with a plus two wisdom modifier. That's effectively the same thing as studded leather, so there's no downside with the upside being that you're always ready for a fight. Back over to Bard immediately. Ninth level Bards can learn fifth level spells. Skill empowerment gives a creature expertise in a skill they were already proficient with for an hour depending on your concentration you could use it on yourself to sharpen your investigation skills or use it on harley to make one of her terrible plans slightly more likely to succeed 10th level bard is a big one expertise in two more skills performance and persuasion will be fun with a capped charisma modifier plus 13 at this point and plus 17 by the end of the build gotta love that consistency your bardic inspiration die also bumps up to a d10 here for more consistency and you get magical secrets one of the best things about being a bard this lets you grab two spells from any list in the game so obviously Obviously, we're bringing the power this level with Thaumaturgy and Jump. Ew. One of those is a cantrip, and the other one is jump. My DM doesn't let us roleplay, and they always have us fight on final destinations, so these are bad spells. Well, 
Thaumaturgy lets you do a bunch of small flavor stuff like make your voice three times louder, cause candles to flicker, shake the earth, or blast open an unlocked door or window with the thunderous power of your voice. That's all cool stuff, and you can have three of those effects going at the same time to assist with your roleplay. Jump triples a creature's jump distance for a minute, you dump strength, but this will let you yell at the ground until it shoots you into the sky. You could grab fly instead, but Black Canary doesn't really fly, it's just short little bursts of hops. And if your DM actually makes a cool map for you to fight on, mobility is good. Sorry to everyone in the comments who thinks jump is useless. Let's, that's on them, not on me. 11th level bards can learn 6th level spells, but I don't really like any of these for Dinah. Instead, grab Legend Lore to let yourself know more about a person, place, or thing of legendary renown. The more you already know about it, the more you learn about it. So boot up the Watchtower computer and remind your DM that you didn't say, I'm rolling an Arcana check. You said, I am spending a 5th level spell slot. Please give me the lore. I know you like your lore. Why would you hide it from me when I used a spell that asks you for lore? 12th level bards get another ability score improvement. Our dexterity is way too low. Get it higher, please. Punching is our main method of putting the hurt out, and you're kind of mediocre at punching right now. We're going to fix it more later. 13th level bards can learn 7th level spells, but again, nothing I like here. I promise we're sticking with bard for a reason. Locate objects lets you find an object within a thousand feet of you, and you know what direction it's going in, helping you track down whatever it is you're looking for. Maybe the best egg sandwich in town. Harley made that sound really good. I've actually made that sandwich using the binging with Babish recipe, and let me say, yeah, it's really good worth spending a second level spell slot on for sure 14th level valor bards get battle magic letting you make a weapon attack as a bonus action after you cast a bard spell with your action effectively making shatter a monk weapon for you the big buff here is magical secrets and these are magical secrets that are really worth coming for Power Word Pain instantly wrecks a creature with less than 100 HP, dropping its speed to 10 feet, giving them disadvantage on attack rolls, ability checks, and saving throws other than constitution saving throws. That's because they have to make a constitution saving throw whenever they try to cast a spell, wasting the slot if they fail, and the only way they can make their head stop ringing is by passing a constitution saving throw on their turn. It'd be a little bit mean if they had disadvantage on that saving throw, you know? Divine Word lets you shout with the power of the gods among us. Deafening creatures within 30 feet of you that fail a charisma saving throw if they have 50 HP or less for a minute. If they have 40 HP or less, they're blinded and it lasts for 10 minutes. If they have 30 HP or less, they're also stunned and it lasts for an hour. If they have 20 HP or less, they just die. It also boots extra planar celestials, elementals, fiends, and fey back to their home plane for 24 hours regardless of their HP totals. You can shout the devil back to hell that's rad. 15th level bards can learn 8th level spells like power word stun, automatically stunning a creature with 150 HP or less, and they can't unstun themselves until they make a constitution save against your capped off DC, so my guess is they're going to be standing still with bloody eardrums for the foreseeable future while your whole team attacks them with advantage. Your bardic inspiration die also bumps up to a d12, so give it to Huntress and have her add it to the damage when she lands a crit, that should be pretty nasty. 16th level bards get another ability score improvement, obviously dexterity still isn't capped, so let's keep pushing it higher and higher. 17th level bards can learn 9th level spells. Power word kill instantly kills a creature with 100 HP or less. No save from them, no attack roll from you, just one person with a head caved in from sonic force. 18th level bards get some more magical secrets. Glibness is actually on the bard list, but I want it anyway. It makes the lowest you can roll on a charisma check 15 for an hour, so 32 is your minimum for performance and persuasion checks, which is two higher than what player's handbook considers nearly impossible difficulty. Haste adds two to a creature's AC, doubles their movement speed, gives them advantage on dexterity saving throws, and an extra action to dash, disengage, dodge, hide, use an object, or make one attack. Once the spell ends, the creature needs to take a round off of actions and reactions, but it lasts for a minute, and you don't really have any other spells worth concentrating on, so I'd go for this one. Our capstone is the 19th level of Bard for an ability score improvement or a feat. We're gonna go for the ability score improvement to cap off your dexterity, add one to your AC, and get you better damage and more accurate punches, but if you want way more damage on your punches, you can go for the fighting initiate feat to give you unarmed fighting, and bump your punch damage up to a d8 when you have two free hands. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you have so many spells to make your enemies miserable, stunning them, blasting them across the map, or just shutting down their communication with a deafening shout. You're also great at making your team better with the biggest inspiration die and multiple ways to use it beyond the standard bard. Finally, you have a lot of higher level spells that don't even offer opportunities to save, meaning creatures have no choice but to suffer. However, that's a double-edged sword because you don't know if those spells will word. 
The power and divine words all require lower HP, so you can take out weaker stuff, but Darkseid is likely not going to be bothered by any of it. You also have barely over 100 HP if you're lucky, meaning someone else with power word kill wouldn't struggle to make your power word dead. Finally, Elemental Adept for Thunder is maybe the worst in the bunch since there aren't a lot of high level Thunder spells and Elemental Adept is sort of a bad feat already. The tough feat would help your HP, fighting Initiate would bump up your damage die, heck you could even get Skill Expert just to be even better at everything. But for street level crime and campaigns this is a fun build shout people down kick them up and join pretty much every team you want to just keep an eye on your health it would be rough if someone clipped your wings too early thanks for watching if you like the video subscribe for more we make two videos every week join the patreon to vote for the lizard from spider-man edward cullen from twilight Kotal khan from mortal Kombat, or trunks from dragon ball z it's a redemption pool they get a little weird sometimes and sub to two lock and mango for more two lock fun